Hi students, this is the first remote teaching MC class. Today we start with, start with chapter 14, liquids and solid. What we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about intermolecular forces and phase chains, vapor pressure and boiling points, and a little bit about property of solids. Let's start with two molecules, water and methane. The molar mass of water is 18 grams. The molar mass of methane is 16 grams. But at room temperature, water is a liquid and methane is a gas. How comes? The answer is, Intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are bonds between molecules. Molecules attract each other, resulting in a bond between the molecules, as you can see here in these pictures. We know three types of intermolecular forces. First, London dispersion forces. Every molecule, molecule has London dispersion forces. Second, some molecules also have, maybe have London dipole dipole attractions. And besides that, some molecules maybe also have hydrogen bonds as their intermolecular force. We're going to discuss all the three of them. We start with London dispersion forces. Two chapters ago we talked about polar and non-polar covalent bond. Let's look at Cl2. This is non-polar covalent bond because the difference in electronegativity between the two Cl atom is zero. However, a split second electrons are maybe more located on the Cl atom on the right, creating a little bit negative charge here and a little bit positive charge for this Cl atom. And this creates an instantaneous dipole, just for a split second. And this instantaneous dipole creates the attraction between the Cl2 molecules. It's weak, but it's there. Every molecule has that. And the London dispersion forces are the weakest in gases and the strongest in solids. So strong in solids compared to liquids, compared to gas. We can also say about the distance of the molecules. The distance between molecules of a gas are the largest compared to solids. Or we can say it requires energy to increase the distance between molecules. So to melt a solid to a liquid, we have to use energy. We have to increase the distance. Let's look at the following thing. Methane, propane, heptane, octane. The mass goes from 16 to 4414. And this is the boiling point. As we can see, increasing molar mass results in increase of the boiling temperature. So, increasing molar mass, the intermolecular forces increase, higher melting boiling point. Higher mass, more protons, but also more electrons, a larger instantaneous dipole, creating stronger bond, higher melting boiling point. Another table. Ethane, propane, butane. Here we see increasing molar mass from 30 to 44.58 and an increasing boiling temperature. Just what I said on with the previous slide. Higher molar mass, higher boiling point. But what for butane and acetone? Well, 58 is molar mass, but this acetone has much higher boiling point. And let's talk about methanol and water. 32, 65 is a boiling point. Or water, the molar mass is 18, and the boiling temperature is 100. So something's going on over there. And that brings us to the two other intermolecular forces. First, dipole-dipole interactions. Polar molecules have an overall dipole. And when the overall dipole, I have a side that's a little bit positive and a side that's a little bit negative, and they attract each other. They have dipole-dipole interactions that are a little bit stronger than the London dispersion forces, so a little bit higher melting and boiling point. And you can see here, butane, 58 molar mass, acetone, 58 molar mass, but the boiling point for butane is minus one Celsius, compared to acetone 56. Butane is non-polar and acetone is polar. Remember from two chapters ago, we can find if a molecule was polar, draw the lower structure, use FASPR to find the molecular geometry, and then see if we have an overall dipole moment. Acetone has an overall dipole moment, makes it a polar. So that's the dipole-dipole interaction. But it doesn't explain why water has such a high boiling point or a melting point. Something's going on over there. And that's the third intermolecular force, hydrogen bond. And that's the bond between an OH and an NH group, or the bond between an hydrogen and a strong electronegative atom, like oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. And the hydrogen bonds are much stronger than the London dispersion forces. So here we see for water the hydrogen bonds. Oxygen is a little bit negative, hydrogen is a little bit positive. And this is the hydrogen bond between the water molecules and they are 
much stronger the London dispersion forces, resulting in a much higher boiling point. Is that important? It is really important. Like I said, it it's, has an influence on the melting the boiling point of a chemical compound. But also, when we talk about dissolving, water and, and ethanol, they dissolve in each other. Ethanol dissolves in water because they're both polar. But let, let's explain it with hydrogen bond. This is ethanol. Here we see the OH group. This is water. Here is my oxygen, a little bit negative. And my water molecule has a little bit positive hydrogen atom. And here we create a hydrogen bond. So ethanol dissolves in water. Why is that? Because ethanol contains an OH group that can form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. And that's the reason ethanol dissolves pretty good in water. Let's do an experiment. Not really, but that's a movie. We have 500 milliliters of water and 500 milliliters of ethanol. And ethanol contains the OH group, mixing together. What will be my final value? You would say 1,000, but the answer is no, it's less than 1,000. So 500 per 500 is not, doesn't equal 1,000. Don't tell your math student, but for chemistry, for this experiment, it's true. Well, watch the movie, the, the, click on the link here later on, and you'll see the experiment. And why is it less than 1,000? Because of this hydrogen bond. This strong bond attracts the, meth, the ethanol and the water molecules closer together. As a result, the overall volume is less than 1,000. So, if you want to have more information about the, the three bonds, so the um, London Diversion Dispersion Forces, dipole-dipole interaction and hydrogen bonds, you can watch this movie. So, for next class, what we're going to do, I want you to do, read chapter 14. Point 1a plus 41.1b. I will send another link with this very small movie about 41b. There's a homework sheet on Schoology 14.1a. Make that work homework sheet and send it back to me by email. And next class, we're going to talk about phase changes, chapter 14.1c. That's it for today. See you again. Bye bye.